Excel is the most used business application and as Power Automate desktop developers, we are automating it a lot. And here's how to do it. So I created a Excel book here on my desktop and I open it and there's only one sheet in it. Here I have five columns, three rows and one header row. So the first one that is a good tablet, TV, laptop, B that is revenue, C that is cost for that good. And then we want to calculate the profit. The profit is simply just the revenue minus the cost. And then we want to write a status such as processed. A very simple task, but it shows you all the nice features about automating Excel in Power Automate for desktop. So let's go do it. So I close my Excel book here. You will find that automating Excel in Power Automate for desktop can cause some problems and I'll also show you how to solve them. So stick to the end. First, I grab the path of this Excel book. I press shift in, right click, copy as path. Then let's move over to Power Automate for desktop. The first thing we want to do is to find a launch Excel. Drag it in. This launches an Excel instance that we can use. Here we can choose to open a blank document or a following document, which could be our Excel book on the desktop. Sometimes you want to create a log from scratch, then you choose blank. Otherwise, we want to open something. Here I can either browse to it by clicking here, or I can simply just control V pasting in my copied path. So if I delete these two quotation marks, that's it. That's the path. Make instance visible. That's nice in the beginning when you want to see uh, what's going on when the robot runs. But honestly, it's not necessarily and it hurts performance a bit. So close that on tick that. So now and then we have open as read only if we don't want to edit the data in it, which we want here, then we can tick open as read only. That will increase performance a bit. But for now, we need to edit it. So we'll untick that as well. Then click save. Generally speaking, I don't like to hard code in values. That is this path here. Imagine that this changes. I need to go into this action, change it here. That might not be the problem. But imagine that we have used this path four times in our flow, then I need to update it four times. So best practice is to create a variable for path. So up in actions, find a set variable and drag it in above the launch Excel. This one here, I could call this Excel path like this. And the value that will be this path again here. So I just control V and delete the quotation marks. Now creating a variable has the advantage that I can now just refer to the Excel path and then get this value out. So if I click save here, and then go into launch Excel, I delete this document path, then I can click this little X here, Excel path, double click it or click and then select like this. Now it got chosen here. So then I can click save. So now we created a dynamic a variable that we can easily change up here. So now we launch it. Usually uh, we want to um, make sure that we also close it again because that can cause a lot of problems in Excel. I will show you a little bit later. So again, stick to the end. So here I take a close Excel in. And what I want to do is that I want before I am closing Excel, I want to save it. So and here I, you can argue that we want to create a new document if we wanted to create uh, different logs. So say that this robot runs every day, we might uh, need a new book for each of those runs, then we just take save document as and choose a document path with the dynamic expression. But now I will just say save document that will just override what's ever in it. But we will not delete any data, we will just update the empty columns. Now we can start reading from this Excel sheet. So these were just the, the skeleton that we built. Now we can put on some meat. So here I want a read from Excel worksheet, drag it in just in the middle of the launch and close Excel. So here I need to say what do I want to read, I could read a single cell, I could read a range of cells, I can take a selection that is if I work in the UI, like opening Excel physically, we will not do that. I'll tr we will try to refrain from that. Or 
we can just take all available values from the worksheet. That's the one we'll pick. So we will read everything that's in this sheet up here. And we can go in advanced. And here you can see first line of range contain column names. We have column names, heroes. So that one, we'll take that one. You can see that we're reading this data into a variable called Excel data. This is a data table. A data table is a very important variable type in Power Automate Desktop, as we'll often use it when we want to manipulate, especially Excel. A data table looks exactly like an Excel sheet, except it is zero indexed and it only exists during the runtime. That is when the robot runs. So when we read it, we read it here, then the robot stops somewhere down here, then uh, the this data table will not be accessible anymore. So if we want to save something in it right now, we just read it. But if we want to update it, we need to remember to save this data table into the Excel sheet. So let's try to click run. So we are launching Excel, then we are reading from it and we are closing it. If I go over here to the right to variables, in case you don't see it, it looks like this or it's empty. Just click this little uh, X up here. These are the variables that we have created. The Excel path we created ourselves, and these two got created while the flow ran. Open the Excel data by hovering your mouse over three rows, five columns, and double clicking. That is our data table. And it looks exactly like the Excel sheet, except you can see here the first row is called zero, then one, and two. And actually, and this first row in the Excel was column two because the headers was actually all was actually row number one. So you just need to to say that in a data table we have a headers um, headers row that that doesn't have a name, and then the first row is zero index, so that is zero. Just need to get your head around that, and you'll be fine. Don't worry, it will come to you after you made your first couple of robots. Now we want to update. Um, these two here. So we have uh, the difficult one that is profit here, we need to make a calculation based on whatever is in here, 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 and then the status. So if, when we processed these um, rows here, I want to write processed in status. Let's go create that first, that's the easy part. And then let's pick the difficult part um, afterwards. We need to say in this data table, I need to iterate through each row one by one, and then I can update profit and processed one by one. So here I'll find a for each, and I'll drag it in right after the read from Excel worksheet. The value to iterate. Here I want to iterate the data table. So click this little X here, double click the Excel data. So that's the one I'm going through. I'm now storing uh, each, uh, the iteration uh, takes the row one by one. And each time the iteration takes the row, I can refer to that by saying current item. I um, often want to create my variables so it reflects the data that's in it. That's also best practice. So here I might say goods and then click enter. Don't worry about these percentage sign. That's the sign of a variable in Power Automate for desktop and Power Automate for desktop automatically created when we create when we just write here in a variable field, you can see it already did it for me as well. So then I can click Save. So now I'm iterating to it, I need to do something about it. And we want to write to our Excel sheet. So I'll find a write to Excel worksheet here. And then I drag it in. So now we just need to think about what do we want to write? Well, um, we want to write processed like this. We want to say I want to write on the specified cell. So which column do we want to write in? And here, let me just click Save, this will give us a few errors. If I just open it up again, the column that we want to write in that's column E, you can see it here. So let me close it again open it up, go into write to Excel worksheet and take the column. Now we need to fill in the row. And this is the row that we are in. And uh, since there's no uh, way we can we can do it if we pick this little X up here, and we can see the goods, there's no uh, thing that we can get the row number, we can only get the columns count the column names. So what we will do here is that you'll create a supporting variable 
That's an important concept in Excel automation. So just go outside it again. Find a set variable. And this set variable it will correspond to um, the row numbers in Excel. So here I'm saying set variable. And then uh, I will call this Excel row counter like this. And we will give it the start value too. And that's because we're writing back to it the Excel worksheet. And here the first row was in row two. Let me just show you that as well. So we are completely sure that we aligned. So this is the first row we are updating it. And that's because the first row are here, that is the headers. So here I want to say, I want to uh, update this one first. Then I want to add one to that counter each time that for each runs through our data table. So we know that we are aligned with this Excel sheet. It looks like this. So I go back here. I have this variable, uh, I gave it the value two that corresponds to the column, uh, sorry, to the row number. Then I find another set variable, drag it in in the end of the for each. Here I will add one to this counter. So click this X here, the Excel row counter, go into the value, Excel row counter, and to add one to it, you need to go inside the percentage sign and say plus one like this. So now we have a counter that we can use up here in the right to Excel worksheet. Go in here, say row, click this little X here, Excel row counter, and click save. Shouldn't we try to um, actually see that this works? Remember to save your flows in Power Automate for desktop because there's no auto save here and you might uh, restart your computer without uh, noticing that you had a flow here, then it will be lost. So now we are running. Uh, we can see that we are launching, reading, set the variable, iterating through the three rows, and closing Excel. We only had the process now, but let's just see that that worked. Then we can easily do the conversion. That's it. We processed uh, three rows here, and we wrote in the status. Now we just need to calculate the profit. The profit here uh, that is calculated where I want to say revenue minus cost. So it will be 4,000 here, 2,000 here and 10,000 here. Um, it looks like numbers. And even though if we formatted those as numbers, uh, they will still when they come into Power Automate Desktop, they will still be treated as objects or text values. So we need to do a conversion. So we get them from here and then we convert them to a um, to a, to a number so we can do a calculation. And here, um, I just do this and go back here. So in our data table, I want to say for each one of the rows, I want to say the revenue that should be stored into a number variable called revenue and the cost, whatever is in here, will be stored into a cost variable numeric value. So I'll need to find two convert text to numbers like this. So here, convert text to numbers. And uh, we will do it before the process. So drag it in here. So which text do I need to convert? I will look in the Q and item, which we named goods. So click this little X here, take the goods. Now I just need to specify in which column do I want to look? Well, the first one we'll take, that was the revenue. So say hard bracket start, hard bracket end, single quotation mark and a single quotation marks. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but it's uh, it says goods and then hard brackets, two single quotation marks, and we'll start writing inside the two quotation single quotation marks. Then I just say revenue. So this will take for each one of these goods row, it will convert whatever is in the revenue column, it will convert that to a number. It's called text as number. Again, we want to rename our variables, that is best practice. So here I'll say revenue like this, and then I can click save. So now we have converted uh, the revenue, then we also needed the cost, we can do two things. We can uh, either drag one more in here, or I can say control C, control V. Now I have two similar, I just need to update this revenue to a cost. So I double click it. I say cost instead of this and the variables produced, that will be cost. So now for each one of these rows, when I'm iterating through it, I have two values now, revenue and cost, I can write back to my Excel worksheet.
So um, here I'll say write to Excel worksheet and the value to write. Well, I will just um, say revenue, I'll move it over here, revenue minus cost. And to do that, I'll need uh, first I can get the revenue, find it over here like this. And when I want to subtract two variables, um, I need to only have percentage signs in the start and in the end. So it will look like this. I can have spaces in, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have it, but I think it makes it a bit more easy to look at for you. And then I'll say cost. I can also, if I want to make sure I don't misspell, I can also find that one over here. But then I just need to delete these two percentage signs. So this is my calculation. Then I want to say, where do I want to write it? It will be in the cell. And that will be in the column D. That's one before our column E before. That's where our profit goes. And the row, that will still be in the Excel row counter. Click this X here. Excel row counter. Save. So now we have our workflow. I'll save it again. And then we will try to run it. So here uh, we are launching Excel. We're reading from it and iterating. So we can see it takes a few seconds uh, more. And let's just go to our Excel sheet. That's it. That's how easy it is to process rows in Excel. I also told you that we often uh, get some errors when we're automating Excel. That's because OneDrive, Power Automate for Desktop and Excel doesn't really talk that well, talk that well together. It's not a problem. You'll usually get a fail to open Excel document or a file related error. Let's force the error and then let me show you how to solve it. Uh, don't worry, it's very easy. So if I go up uh, in the first, uh, this right to Excel worksheet, here I'll say revenue minus cost, and then I'll just say minus a text value. So this one will give us an error. And um, the thing is, uh, now we can force the Excel error. So what will happen? We are launching Excel. This will uh, give us an error here. The workflow will stop and then we are not closing it properly, that means that it locks the Excel sheet. Let me show you. So if I just click play here, we're launching Excel and there you go, we have an error. And um, if I try to run it again, um, I can show you both. I can, uh, if I open it, you will, you'll see that I'm getting these uh, kinds of errors. I can't really open it. And when I run it again, we will fail up in the launch Excel where we will get a uh, timeout error uh, that we can retrieve, uh, that we can open this Excel instance. So let me just fast forward till it fails. And you can see that it actually just uh, keeps running. This will give us an error eventually, and uh, we don't have to wait for that. So I'll click stop here. So now we want to say, I want to fix this. And this is actually very easy. Um, so what I will do is just, I have my Excel sheet here. So I'll go down to the start menu. Here I will just start typing CMD. That will give us a the command prompt. So we'll open this. So now we want to close Excel by force. And remember, if you have any Excel sheets open on your computer, this will also close them. So remember to save them because uh, they it will not prompt you. So what we are going to write here is task kill forward slash F that is force. And then we want to say the image of Excel XM. So when I run this command, I just press enter. You can see that we now shut down two processes. We also need to go into data. Now this is unlocked and click close here and then we can click save. So now, um, and uh, just for good manner, uh, press the upper arrow in here and just do this again. It's not found now, but sometimes it opens up again. So now we can run it and we have freed, uh, so to say, our Excel sheet. And here you can see we still have the arrow. So we should, of course, uh, fix that one. And we can do that by saying this. And now we'll get the error again. So let's just uh, counter that by doing show here. Click close here. We repeat it. It's uh, nice to see. So then we do this. Now you can see we have the process has been terminated. So uh, again, whenever you went in and did, click close and document recovery, remember to do the task skill. Now the process will run perfectly. So that's it. I prepared the next Power Automate desktop lesson for you and it's right up here. See you.